Gotta go fast. I'm Juliana and you're watching Sprocket Girl. Welcome to episode 2 of my Rider to Racer vlog series. If you haven't seen episode 1, click on the link above and I'll also leave a link in the description below this video. So for those of you who didn't see episode 1, I'll just give you a quick summary. I am currently preparing for my very first enduro race in Snowmass. <laughs> for an awesome race preparation program through Vita Mountain Bike, which offers the participants several coach-led rides and also preparation nights hosted by local bike shops where we learn about proper gear that we need for the race, proper nutrition, and also how to set up your bike in preparation for the race. The Vita Mountain Bike coaches and ambassadors have been available to us for moral support and also questions and have sometimes even come along with us on our practice and social rides, which was awesome. So far, it's been an amazing experience to have participated in this program and be part of a community of really supportive, knowledgeable, and kind women who are all really trying their best to help prepare us participants for this big event, the race. So I'm really, really glad that I signed up for this. So last time in episode one, I talked about our first coach led ride, and today, since it's episode two, I'm gonna talk about the second one. And for the second coach led ride, we went to the Apex and Enchanted Forest Trails, which are part of the Apex Park Trail System, which is a system of intermediate to advanced trails just outside of Golden, Colorado. Since we were mainly practicing our downhilling skills, we shuttled to the top of Enchanted Forest, rode Enchanted down, then climbed back up part of Apex, rode Enchanted back down again, and then rode the kind of bowels part, the, the scariest part of Apex, back to the lower parking lot. And this gave us plenty of opportunities to session some of the gnarliest parts of Apex and Enchanted. So Enchanted Forest, as the name says, is more of like a foresty, woodsy, environment where we have a lot of roots and drops between trees, whereas Apex is a lot more rocky and has a lot of jaggedy rocks and is really technical. So we got the whole plethora of different types of technical experiences. So one of the things we talked about is picking an A-line versus a B-line. So an A-line might be one that has a drop or a jump on it, whereas the B-line might be a little bit um, less scary and might take you around that feature. Depending on your skill level and abilities, it might be faster to take the A-line if you're able to jump it. In my case, um, I'm not advanced enough to actually jump certain features, so oftentimes I will just, um, you know, out of habit, take the B-line. However, some of the A-line features you can actually roll, and uh, that's what we practiced here. This is a great example of an A and B-line. Because the if you are comfortable getting air and coming through here and launching over this, it's faster. Mm -hmm. When we came through this before, I rolled over this for you guys to see like that it's a roller. Oh, that I went this way, rollable. I think. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the way to learn to ride it when you're riding something you don't know what you're on, you roll up to it, you see what it is, and then you push. Go over. Gotcha. And that gets you back on your bike forward. That's what you're going to come up on, see it, and, and push through. And so I feel like here we should do it both ways. It out. We'll yeah, do you mind rolling it and I just watch? Yeah. Okay. It makes it look so stable, too. Okay. Trying to look ahead. Yep, and your body knows how to do this because you did it. <laughs> That's and true. I didn't think about it too much either. Good. Woo! That was awesome. That felt way easier than it looked, actually. That's awesome. Perfect. Nice. That was the perfect, like, slow look push. That was 
textbook. So learning how to approach a feature that you're unfamiliar with at a slow speed and visually checking it out before you then push your bike out in front of you and roll down it is a really important thing to know and it's something that I then um, tried to apply on the rest of the ride. This part I'm always scared about. To me, you did that first roll off like no problem. The way the top of the roll, I was like, damn girl, spell some balls. You can do that. Okay. This to me looks way smaller than that. Really? Yes. Yeah. I don't know why this guy always freaks me out here. So you would pick the left line, like I, to the left or the right? I would ride the right line because I'm gonna roll through here and not have to worry about landing out there. <laughs> yeah. I am going to ignore your advice and take the middle. If you're going to slow down, that's what my brain wants. This, to yeah, right. Mm -hmm. If you're slowing to a comfortable speed, that's probably the correct progression mm. because then eventually you're going to be like baby air, more air, lots of air, and I don't even yeah. care. It's this mental thing with this thing. Another thing that I learned in the coach led rides and that I've been trying to hammer into my own brain over and over again is to not use two fingers to brake. You're supposed to only use your index finger to brake and your other fingers on your handlebars. That was really something that has been difficult for me to unlearn because for some reason I just learned to use two fingers in the beginning and it's something that I've been practicing over and over and over in all my rides and uh, I think I've now started to retrain my brain actually to use only one finger even when I'm you know in a sketchy situation and I need to brake I'm using only my index finger and it's actually a good thing because you don't want to be grabbing your brakes with two fingers which means you'd have more force on the brakes but rather you want to be able to lightly feather your brakes with your index finger while being able to hold on securely to your handlebars. I definitely don't always do it right and I still once in a while use two fingers but at least now it's in my brain and um, my head just tells me to switch to one finger when I catch myself doing it so that is definitely a huge progression for me and something that I'll be doing on my race as well. Alright guys, that's it for episode 2. Stay tuned for the following episodes which will feature the third coach led ride and other things that I've learned throughout this program as well as the actual race day. And if you like this vlog series, if you like my channel, hit the subscribe button and like some of the videos and also hit that bell button if you want to get a notification when I post new content. Alright, that's it for now and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!